Good evening, welcome to a new episode of The Fix. It's a new year, and guess what? We have a new Tory cabinet. Michael, today we had a reshuffle. It's not very new. What the fuck is going on? We haven't said Happy New Year yet. Happy, happy new, new Year. Happy, happy 2018. What's going to happen this year, Mike? Before we get into the real business end of things, what's going to happen? What's going to happen this year? Oof, I think we'll get one year closer to socialism. Uh, but I'm not sure we'll achieve it before 2019. Okay. Yeah. Pessimist. What do you think? Uh, I have a... I mean, I think we need to talk an election into happening. Ooh, I like that. I, I'm, a big, I'm a big believer in making things happen. We need you to know, the, make an election happen. The strongest theory I heard for there going to be an election, we'll do this very quickly, is um, that even though it's completely irrational for the Tories to call an election, because why would you call an election that you might lose when you've got three years left or four years left yeah. of, the, of the parliament or whatever, is if the, her cabinet just can't help themselves. You know, they know it's sort of like a really bad time for the Conservative parties to rebel and completely tip the whole thing over, yeah. but they just can't help it. Like with the, the coup with Jeremy Corbyn, like it wasn't a good time for the moderates to attack, but they just couldn't resist it any longer. And so I think the only reason we might get an election is if like, you know, Boris Johnson just blows his load sort of before it makes sense. After Brexit's possible, the party. Yeah. Anyway. I personally think they probably aren't as stupid as the fucking idiots who as egged the on right. the coup in 2016, but that's another conversation. I think Boris Johnson's smarter than Hillary Benn. I mean, Boris, I mean, yeah, but you would need more success two thirds of the party to start. Well, you, well, fundamentally, you need dozens of them being up for it, and I don't think that's true. Mm. Anyway. Anyway. The reshuffle. The reshuffle. The reshambles. Go on. Uh, well, Tell me more. To be honest, it wasn't that event for... We haven't had many big <clears throat> players move because Theresa May isn't in a strong enough position to move any big players. Because so why do we have the reshuffle? Uh, well, partly because... Oh, Damien Green had to go. Right. From Wankgate. So she had wank, to... Wank to work. Wank to work. David Davis, you sell out. You said you'd resign. <laughs> you've let down... <laughs> you've let down wankers at work everywhere. How can we trust a Brexit Set secretary? Up. No, in, who no won't integrity. Stand up exactly. For if that, I'll tell you what. A porn watching deputy prime minister. I'll tell you minister. what. If that was Farage or Corbyn, yeah. he would have resigned because you know they're people of their word. Exactly. They're a, know. you know they're in, they're value politicians. <laughs> anyway, yeah. None of the big dogs have gone. Boris Johnson hasn't gone, despite uh, keeping. I always forget her name. Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe. That's right. In an Iranian jail by yeah. screwing up in Parliament and saying she was a journalist when she was claiming to have been on holiday. Obviously, we don't know which of, which of these well, is she, true. She, she, was her grand, she was with her daughter and she met her mum and, I mean, mm. whatever. Uh, the day started shambolically when the Conservatives announced that Chris Grayling would be becoming party chairman. Uh, this turned out to be a big mistake and was deleted 20 seconds, seconds later. So that was how the day started. Uh, we then moved on to some minor, minor changes, minor positions. Uh, which probably won't be that important for the governing of the country, but it's always a good opportunity to look through what weirdos the Tory party are. Wait, so we're doing all of this just because Damien Green because wanked at work? We're doing this because Damien Green... The whole Green... day's news cycle has been determined by one man's porn addiction. Yeah, well, apparently also she wanted to get rid of Justine Greening because Justine Greening okay. doesn't like grammar schools and okay. apparently Justine Greening goes on in cabinet. So okay. This, this is... So Justine Greening as well is the big... Justine story, Greening has also finally gone. Right. Uh, after two hours of arguing the case that she didn't want to go, she didn't want to go. Uh, and Jeremy Hunt apparently argued for about an hour, so he gets to stay as health secretary to finish the job and completely privatise our NHS yeah. and burn it to the ground. Anyway, some, some weird promotions we had today, or promotions, demotions, they moved anyway. Uh, the new Tory party chairman is Brandon Lewis. Never heard of him. Uh, well, he used to be the housing minister, and when he was, he urged against including sprinklers in fire safety rules as it could discourage... Uh, property developers from building homes. Uh, I mean, where do you draw the line, right? Where do you draw Central the line? Central heating, plumbing, windows, Double insulation. Blazing. I mean, where, where do you... Locks on the doors. Look, look. We, Mike and I were talking about this. We've actually got a radical, innovative new solution to deal with Britain's housing crisis. You just put up loads of tents mm -hmm. and, you know, we will well, build you don't put them up. millions of housing yeah. units. The, the, the key bit, the, the genius of it is, is we don't put up the tents. Right. What we do is, well, we're not the government, but what we do is the state, yeah. is we invite private businesses okay. to put up tents wherever see. they want right. and they can charge... It can be flammable tarpaulin, and it can be they can, can be charge whatever. whatever they want to live in. Yeah, them. yeah. Uh, which might be quite high, I suppose, if you don't get moved on. London yeah. housing crisis. Yeah. Uh, so that's our new Tory party chairman. The new vice chair for policy is Chris Skidmore. All right, wrong and Go on. Uh, so in 2012, he said 
in defense of Tory policy at the time and which continues now. Cuts aren't so bad as people aren't lying dead in the street, uh, which is nice and comforting from, I don't know what his job was at the time then anyway. Well, they're lying dead in the street. They're lying dead in A&Es on trolleys. They're lying dead at home waiting for ambulances mm. that take five hours to get there. They're dying pretty much everywhere, Chris. So congratulations, you've had exceeded expectations. Yeah, in the street, at home. Everywhere. Dark. People are fucking dying everywhere. On a lighter note, he, he was in a weird-ass band when he was at university. Uh, after the Queen Mother died, they sung songs about sodomizing the Queen Mother to death. Uh, it's not very conservative, really. That's not, you know, it's not appealing to your base, is it? Worse than whatever um, just, Emma Dent Code ever said about the royals. Just uh, they also had songs entitled, I've Got a Big Willy, Women Are Crap, and I'm Glad I'm Not Obese. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not so into ruining people's career because whatever they did at the age of 21, but I mean, this isn't even funny. This is just like... Oof. They practiced, kind of they, pra they wrote and practiced and performed these songs. It's not like a... a it's not like an off-cuff. Yeah. We all say something silly on Twitter, you're pissed, or mm. you write something, you regret it. Everybody's done that. These are clearly fucking weird people. And our, our final kind of wrong one is Maria Caulfield, who is now vice chair for women in CCHQ, who's upset many women's charities because she is a pro-life campaigner, obviously completely at odds with, with the population at large and with women in Britain. It's unlike Theresa May to just choose somebody who's got completely fucking odd opinions on things. Oh, isn't it? That, that is very unlike Theresa the, May. The, you know, consummate politician mm. that she is. What was the first story oh, right. of no, okay. 2018? That's true, that's true. You, One minute past midnight. You've pulled on me new up here. Day. You've got me. Uh, we've got the new office for students. Um, which was announced at the beginning of the month, like you said, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year, which is set to be a regulator, Ofcom-style regulator of an increasingly privatised higher education in England and Wales, mm -hmm. not Scotland. Uh, and Toby Young was one of the people on its kind of committee board, whatever the fuck it is, from a range of backgrounds, including private enterprise, free schools, private enterprise, the private sector, lobbying and law, and, right? And one random student. <laughs> As a student rep. So the, the office for students has one student on it who has, you know, they haven't asked anyone from the NUS. Nobody, they haven't elected anyone. She's no not been elected. Person, she's got no mandate. She's a student. On, on, the, on the press release, it just says, comma, student. From Surrey University. What can you do? Anyway, Toby Young, I mean... So that's about, because we, we could talk about the, the body. That would mean that we were actually, you know, engaging in serious political analysis. Instead, we're going to talk about... The fatuous idiot, we'll do, we'll the do, lump of ignorance we'll that is do, Toby Young. We'll do some serious analysis no, we will. at the end. But we will. in a way, Tories being from a weird, creepy section of society, I think is telling in a way, you know. I think that can tell us something about politics, really. Anyway, let's go on to Toby Young. Well, they've only got, we haven't actually got the graphic for this, but they've only got 70,000 members now. Yeah. Very, well, you have to be fucking weird to be a Tory party 60, member. 65,000 of them really fucking weird. Yeah, well, uh, more. Five thousand of them still members by accident. Paper even members. They joined six, 60 years ago. They're in a coma. All right, Toby Young. Tell me about Toby Young. What are his credentials? He started free schools, right? Uh, well, he initially he was saying that he tried for a PhD. He mm. taught in uh, higher education. He'd been a Kennedy Fulbright Scholar, all this stuff. Yeah, so he's got he's, he's got credentials. He went to Oxford. Then he taught his dad, all these well, American. He taught his dad. These, his dad oh. got him into Oxford, right? So that doesn't count. Okay. He was rejected from the college. His dad said, his dad, by the way, who wrote the 1945 Labour Manifesto, outstanding social scientist called Michael Young. Um, and uh, he said, well, I'll talk to the chap, I'll get you in. And he got him in. So, no, I mean, his Oxford credentials okay. don't really... That doesn't count. Uh, but then he, he, he went on to do a PhD. He went on and no, no, he, a, he, didn't, he didn't complete the PhD. Oh, he didn't actually. complete the PhD. No. Was he going on to more important... No, I just More think he, he just pulled out and then he started writing for, uh, I think, um, Vanity Fair in the United States. Which we'll, we'll go on to some of the comments right, of will, those yeah. pieces later. But he did start a free school. Yes, that is true. He did start a free More school. More than one, I think. Actually. I think that's about, just about his only credential, really, is free schools. Which uh, he later said were very difficult to actually run. Turns out <laughs> it's not easy to run a school. It's uh, not as easy as you think. And then more recently, actually, let's we should, get, we should talk about this. Scandals. But no, but before we do that, okay. uh, he was also the director of the New Schools Network, which is basically about importing the US charter school system over to the mm. UK. Uh, and he was earning, we think, around 90 to 100 grand a year. 
So this is a man who has taken... They've, they've, already, they've already found out about the cocaine, Aaron. Oh, look, here we are. That's, that's coming. That's coming. That's coming. <laughs> that's coming. Oh. That's coming. So he was on 100 grand a year. He had money from the state sector, from the state to basically start his shitty free schools. Mm -hmm. uh, he got into a world-class university because of his father. Basically, this man has been taking state handouts his entire life. He calls himself a classical liberal. Toby Young, you've been suckling at the teat like a, a parasitic tick for too long, my friend. And you want a minimal state? Are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, let's talk about the goss. Because that's more important. You've got the first bit of goss. I have got the first bit of goss. Should we, should we start with the goss? Okay. So people might be saying, typical left, moral panic. You know, you're taking it too far. Just a couple of errant tweets. We all do it. Hold up. Toby Young has admitted to being a drug dealer. He's admitted to selling drugs, okay? In a, a 2001 piece after he'd been thrown out of the... <laughs> this is madness. He's a drug dealer. He was writing for um, uh, God knows where. He'd been thrown out of the Groucho in, in Soho. He wasn't allowed to be a member anymore. He documented this. He said, my crime was to write about a cocaine-taking incident. My crime, my alleged, <laughs> my alleged crime. Yes, it's a fucking drug, you idiot. <laughs> about a cocaine-taking incident that occurred during a photo shoot for Vanity Fair's Cool Britannia. I was the editor in charge, and in my recently published book, I reveal that Damien Hurst and Keith Allen, the photo's two subjects, demanded I supply them with alcohol and cocaine as a condition for posing for the camera. So he didn't just take drugs, he was selling drugs while at work. My alleged crime. If you're a white guy, prestigious background, mm. you write about it, you actually get paid for the article. If you're a younger working class person, you go to prison. Yeah. I mean, it's also important to remember that he's not, he's not a student when he does this. It's not just a bit of... He's, he's, he's in his 40s. He's in his 30s and 40s at this point. I think he's in his 40s then, but yeah. Yeah, early 40s, late 30s. Uh, anyway, he's, besides being a drug dealer, what other, what other things is he? Well, he's also got the, the standard assortment of abhorrent views about women, uh, the disabled, gay people. Uh, so we're going to get a few examples up here, uh, which I actually can't make out with my eyes. So we're going to have to remember what some of them uh. were. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, um, well, basically, I think the Evening Standard talks about it quite well. They said he had an obsession with commenting on the anatomy of women in the public mm. eye. So he's, he's, he's watched a lot of plays and said that the various actresses have great tits. That was a theatre review. That was a theatre review. He said that the breasts of an actress in a, in a, in a play, she wasn't a day over 18. Oh, some of them are up now. Here Danny Boyle's wife's got huge knockers. By the way, that was Danny Boyle's daughter, who at the time was a minor. Oh. She was a minor, she was a kid. Not good. Right, the next one. In hotel room. Go on, oh, let's get that back. Back, back, back for <laughs> us to see. In hotel room with five months pregnant. Oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> In a five months pregnant Padma, her boobs are massive. Be careful what you wish with this. Is Padma Lakshmi, former wife of um, Salman Rushdie. Mm. I mean, just stop. He's look, in his 40s. I is. mean, men, look, let's not lie. Men say loads of fucked up weird stuff. 90% of men. I mean, everybody said something stupid. We, I've said something stupid. Everybody said something stupid. This guy repeatedly is saying it in mm. public. Over and over In his and 40s. Over again. Not as a 20-year-old. Yeah. And now he's in, uh, you know, a position of public importance. In a completely obsessive way obsessive. as well. Compulsive. He also called George Clooney queer as a coot. I think somebody's jealous. Who's not? Come on. Oh, who's not jealous, but I mean, if but you But we lashed out in different ways. If you look like the hybrid child of an ostrich egg and a fetus, you're going to be uh, yeah. angry that, you know, George Clooney is, you know, cleaning up. All right, the stories get worse than tweets. Let's see his next prank. So, uh, okay, so we talked I mean, about... it's not a prank. Drug, a drug, dealing drugs is obviously a criminal offence. I think drugs should be decriminalised, but I think when we talk about... I, I'm not a big fan of privilege, <clears throat> the whole discourse around privilege, white privilege, class privilege. But a white guy that's literally writing about selling drugs and being paid for the article, that's privilege, mm. right? So that was a criminal offence. The other criminal offence is when he pretended to be a woman uh, in order to make out with lesbians. And again, he planned to write about it. Now, this is premeditated sexual assault. Uh, and I'm not making this up. He says here, the line is, the plan was to approach gorgeous young lesbians, draw them into my confidence, then make out with them on the dance floor. So again, this is another... Criminal act, you know, sort of acts, and he's writing about writing it. Writing about it. Yeah. I mean, he should he should be in a a custody suite. He should be in a prison. He shouldn't be overseeing free speech on campuses. All right, we're getting on to the eugenics. 
So uh, he had a campaign against inclusion in schools. So inclusion in schools is about making schools welcoming to children of, with different needs and different abilities, different, you know, different backgrounds. Uh, I'm for it. I used to work in a special needs department. You know, positive step in schools. He's not into it. Uh, so let's go for his, uh, what he's written about it here. So inclusive. It's one of those ghastly political correct words that have survived the demise of new labour. Schools have got to be inclusive these days. Air quotes. Yeah, air quotes. That means wheelchair ramps. <laughs> the complete works of Alice Walker in the library school, in the school library, though no Mark Twain, in a special education needs department that can cope with everything from dyslexia. Imagine a school that can deal with dyslexia. <laughs> what? <laughs> You can't read! This is a school! We're not going to fucking help you! You can't I mean, that's read the, and write! That's, that's it! Well, I mean, it's, you, you're Literally. in a wheelchair, just stay outside! What do you expect us to do? Build a ramp? Do you want doors? Build a ramp? You want for clean you? drinking water in a school? What the fuck is wrong with you? The expectations are You people. want lunch? <laughs> <laughs> so, I think there's two things that are going on here. Toby this isn't a place for children! <laughs> He's confusing political correctness for the law and prisons for schools, <laughs> right? I mean, there's a few sort of category errors which are going on here, right? Anyway. It gets a little bit worse. If Gove is serious about wanting to bring back O-levels, the government will have to repeal the Equality Act because any exam that isn't accessible to a functionally illiterate troglodyte with a mental age of six will be judged to be elitist and therefore forbidden by Harmon's law. I'm guessing that's Harriet Harmon. That's right. So he's talking about kids with special needs as being functionally illiterate troglodytes with a mental age of six. Yeah. I mean, this is... Batshit. And his solution is to separate them from, from normal kids. Well, presumably uh, not even to educate them. Presumably. What does he... Just put them in... What do you do with them? I, I don't know. What, whatever... This guy would have been very happy in Ceausescu's Romania. Actually, with what they used to do with, you know, people mm. with special needs. They just used to, like, fucking chain them up. I mean, he's... Let's be honest. That's the kind of person this man is. Well, I mean, his argument is that, yeah, by not... By not abandoning anyone yeah. with any you abandon special need or extra need. We're dragging down the rest of people, so fuck it. There's no such thing as society. Everyone for themselves. The funniest thing of all is that he has edited his own Wikipedia article. Guess how many times? His own Wikipedia article. I've got it written down. I'm going to... Go I'm, on. I'm, I'm going to guess a different... 282 times. 282 times. He's changed his own Wikipedia. He cares about his public image so much, the man who talks about doing Padma Lakshmi up the or talking about minors, you know, body parts, he's changed his own Wikipedia article 282 yeah. times. All right, we've, we've talked for a long time about Toby Young because there's a lot of content. He's still there. Uh, he's still and he's there. Th well, we're going to look at, I think now, Theresa May's very... Ho hold on one second. So Theresa May, this weekend on the Andrew Marr, had a very strong Theresa May-like response. Lots of integrity <laughs> and some real leadership shown. Uh, so we'll get that up. When we can, obviously, we've also had Boris Johnson defend him to the hilt. Oh, he called really uh, it's caustic wit. A caustic wit, which is exactly <laughs> what we need to govern our Here universities. Ridiculous outcry over Toby Young. He will tr bring independence, rigour and a oh. caustic wit. We don't have the video, so we're going to have to act it out. Who gives a fuck? I mean, she's literally, she could be, she's like a waxwork. <laughs> well, what, I mean, we could, we could cut to Madame Tussauds and you think it was the fucking what Prime she's, Minister. What she says is... I have to admit, Andrew, I wasn't, I wasn't at all impressed with the tweets I've seen. Um, but he has done some excellent work in free schools. And I have to say, I have to say, Andrew, that if he tweets anything like this again whilst he's in public office, he will be fired. Tweets. It's like, if you... Tweets. If, if, like, how low can your bar be? Like, now you are one of the most important people in the higher education system who's been appointed to the office a drug dealing, for students. A drug dealing nonce. If now Let's in your current job <laughs> you tweet about 18 year olds breasts, in your current job if you tweet about having your dick up people's ass, <laughs> then you're going to get fired. <laughs> like also, like he'd probably do it. She'd call him to number 10, they'd she be there for like him. two hours and then like Boris would give her a call and be like, if you fire him, it's a fucking nightmare. We've been in negotiations about his horse trick Wit. <laughs> that's, that's too much face <laughs> She's not I mean, enough brown. We need anyway. subtitles when she fucking talks. I can't understand what she's actually saying. All right, to finish the show, we should talk about the serious issues that are going on in Britain. Because whilst this game of musical chairs between Britain's biggest creeps continues, the NHS is in absolute crisis. 
and there is only one bunch of people to blame, which is the Tory party, and to be honest, actually New Labour because of the PFIs, which are sort of crushing the NHS a bit. At least they funded it well. So performance. I mean, all the time. metrics were good, right? Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't sustainable, but the metrics the were metrics good. The metrics were good at the time. So we've got a couple of stories. So, uh, oh, turn the page. Sorry about that. Oh, like no. an, It's like a new year. It's like a new year. You're just turning the page. Oh, here we go. This is the big one, right? All non-urgent operations cancelled in NHS hospitals You do this February. part because I've lost my bit of paper. Well, you wrote it. I wrote it, yeah, but now I don't have it. Well, I mean, that's quite big. So I think like <laughs> not, they call it a non-elective surgery, don't they? So it's non-urgent stuff. Yeah. The waiting list, I think, is in excess of four million at the moment. Four million. I mean, it's just incredible. But it's called non-urgent, but it could be Cataracts, incredibly key hernia, to your life. Yeah, you hip, might... Hip, hip operations. Yeah, you might not be able to This is people who might not be able to move. Yeah. You know, so it might people that are stuck on their couch. They're not going to die because they haven't got their hip operation, but it is really going to... But they can't earn money. They might be depressed, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Theresa May tried to claim that it wasn't that much of a crisis because at least they cancelled them in advance. <laughs> so she's saying, she's saying a crisis, you know, would have been if people had turned up to hospital, if they'd come oh, into hospital with yeah. their fucked up hip, and then we told them to go back home. Um, but at least we've given everyone in Britain, everyone in Britain, advance. Not actually, if you were on the 1st of January, you didn't get any advance. Oh my God. But we've given everyone advance that if you had an operation, 50,000 people had an operation booked for January, which Can you imagine? Moved. Theresa May, she's like, she'll phone up her boss, you know, she's like meant to be at work in yeah. like 10 minutes time. And she's like, hello, I can't make it in to work for the next six weeks. Okay, thank you. Puts down the goes, yes, I'm quite the model employee. <laughs> I did give them warning. <laughs> I, did give them, I did give them full warning. Um, Oh, but it does get so, well, I mean, this is, is anyone's operations getting cancelled is incredibly serious. That's going to really negatively impact your life. And it's life. accumulating, right? It's getting worse every yeah. year. But it is also killing people. Yes, So uh, we heard on the weekend that a woman in Essex, a, a pensioner, 81 years old, had called an ambulance because she had pains in her chest. Yeah. And the ambulance took three and three quarters of an hour to get there. Yeah. And she was dead by the time the ambulance got there. That doesn't need to happen in Britain. I mean, there's, there's, there's targets around ambulance waiting times, and I don't think they've been met for about the best part of three mm. years. Every single month it's failing. Um, and we can talk about PFI and new Labour, but mm. that never happened with Labour. Yep. And in instances like this, that means something. Yep. So not draw an equivalence between the Tories and Labour, because this 81-year-old lady, uh, she would have had an ambulance, she may have lived. Exactly. So. Oh, we... no, I do have... Oh, look, I found it. Go on, Michael. Sorry about that. Um, so, uh, so whenever Jeremy Hunt or Theresa May are confronted with these kind of facts on the television, what they'll say is they'll try and make it sound like a natural disaster. They'll try and say, we do have an aging population. Act of God, right? Yeah. Uh, it's an act of God and we're dealing with it and it's very difficult and we have put an extra one billion pounds in, blah, 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 blah. After Jeremy Hunt went on Channel 4 for this, uh, for an interview when the operations were first cancelled, the cha Channel 4 did quite a good bit of journalism afterwards, which was to fact check everything he'd said. So he was saying, We've, we're seeing more people under four hours. Uh, that's partly true, but it turns out that uh, the amount of people who aren't being seen in four hours has gone up dramatically. Yeah, that's because demand has gone up. It's, gone, it's, cause demand, oh, it's cause there's more people as well, yeah. actually. Uh, so in the first three months of 2010, so that was when the last time Labour were in government, 100,000 patients waited over four hours yeah. in A&E. That's now gone up to 700,000. So that's an increase of 600%. Well, 700%, is it? Well, if it goes up to 200,000, that's 100%. Anyway, well, you it's, can, seven, it's gone up seven times. It's gone up by seven. Uh, and. <laughs> don't, LS, never, there's LSE never, and never, UCL. Qu never question my math. Graduate students. Um, and populations don't age that quickly. This is not a natural disaster. It's gone up. Gradually, year after year after year, and it's peaking, well, it's not necessarily peaking, it might go higher and higher. It's at 700,000 people waiting that much, waiting that period of time, or waiting over four hours. Uh, there used to be a target to be seen within four hours. That used to be that 95, it used to be that 98% of people were seen within four hours. Uh, Which again, the, New Labour kept. They kept, New Labor pretty, kept it. They were pretty solid on 98 that. 98% of people, when you went to A&E, you'd be seen within four hours. What the Tory party did was, first of all, they said, oh, this is a little bit too ambitious. Uh, let's put it down to 95%. So they changed the goalpost in 2012 to 95%. And they have spectacularly missed 
that changed goalpost, and it is now 85%. So only 85% of people are seen within four hours. And all of this is happening while we see record levels of uh, nurses leaving the profession. Mm -hmm. uh, we There are a bunch of, we should do some stuff on this actually, mental health issues. They're saying they're suffering mental health problems, anxiety, and it goes right from the bottom to the top. So even you know junior doctors, we don't need to go into that. Mm -hmm. You know, Huge grievances there. So, I mean, on every measure, it's in another, terms of... It's another thing that drives me crazy because... they're destroying this thing. Jeremy Hunt, when he goes on TV, he's sort of like... Uh, because the line they like to use is one that sounds convincing, even though it's got no basis in fact. So he says, well, this problem, obviously, it's not really our fault because it takes seven years to train a doctor. And we've only been in office for seven, seven years. years. Uh, but what that doesn't take into account is how many people are leaving the profession because he's treating them like shit. Yeah. And also, one of the reasons why there is much more demand in the NHS is because there have been real-term cuts in social care, which means that whereas the cheapest thing to do as a country and the best thing for people's health is early intervention, seeing someone soon if they think that they might have a health problem mm. or giving people advice about quitting smoking, etc., etc., especially important with mental health. Uh, what the Tories have done by cutting social care dramatically is that this has massively increased the amount of people going into A&E um, and there hasn't been the extra funding to deal with that. So true. Everybody, you know, everybody knows about this, right? You don't get a meet meeting with your GP and then you consider going mm -hmm. to end. We um, all know, we all live this thing every day. So anything else? No. NHS wise? I think, I mean, you'll continue to see, I really should, my New Year's resolution is going to be to code, to give page numbers to my notes or some sort of like colour coding, something like that. Less shuffling in 2018. Anyway, let's on that note, go to support.navaramedia.com and we'll, uh, we, we can then afford the extra ink to number the pieces mm. of paper. And if you want a decent health service, make 2018 the year we get socialism. Or okay. at least closer to it. Ambitious. Yeah. Ambitious. Anything else? No. Good. Good. Well, Navara FM is back on Friday. I think we've got a new uh, episode of The Lockdown out soon. Mm -hmm. All the Best was out recently. If you want to check out any of our podcasts, articles, videos... Go to NavarraMedia.com, like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Twitter. I just want to add, related to what we've just been discussing, we also have a series of a uh, junior doctor who's writing articles about the NHS crisis. Very good. Definitely check that out on the yeah. website. Excellent. So we'll see you next, next week. week.